Hello, 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 and welcome to another Steel Division Divisional Overview. And today we're taking a look at the 9th Panzer Division, the real, later, more aggressive Panzer Divisions of the bunch. Trading out Panzer threes and, or just having no tanks in any phase, for using the little Panzer runs and twos that they used to invade France, or even though the Panzer II Luke was in 1943. Nonetheless, so, yeah, pretty good division, and are fun if you want a more aggressive a phase playstyle for your German tank division. So without further ado, let's take a look at their stats. So in A phase, you've got 85 points, which is pretty good. And then B and C phase is 125, which is pretty good as well. It's not a ton, but it's not a little either. It's a good balance. 36 extra facing points, which is pretty standard. And overall, your slots are pretty well balanced. You're not with a free restriction in terms of slots in any of the categories. So you got a good amount of leeway. So let's take a look at the recon. Recon's pretty standard. And the main difference are the Panzer Run Cs. They are a rather light tank and they have pretty much a armor piercing machine gun, which is only really good for dealing with extremely lightly armored vehicles. But for a 40 point recon vehicle, it's pretty decent. It has shorter range compared to like a 234 slash run and not an auto cannon. But you can still provide rather effective infantry fire support with both of the machine guns and the rather good uh, card efficiency. You can get some more vetted runs too, but you also have the unvetted as well. So a nice, cheaper, spammable A phase recon compared to your 234s and other reeled recons, even though these are on tracks. You end down this pretty much as spar troops from Yen on now and A and B phase. Two star spar troops are not to be trifled with as spar troops hold their own rather well because they got a bloody MG34. And you got some 234 slash runs and 234 slash threes if you want something a little bit more standard. So nothing really too crazy for recon. Infantry, uh, there's no real like new crazy unit. It's rather, well, everything's rather standard for this division. So you have Panzer Grenadiers in A phase. You have an option between half tracks or no half tracks in this case. But a real major crazy difference is the ability to get Sturm Pioneers in A phase. And considering that a lot of Axis divisions don't get CQC specialists in A phase, makes this a rather big deal. As usually fighting in towns early on, especially like Trophus S, it's a pain in the ass. As your Panzer Grenadiers are only really good in open ground engagements. So Sturm Pioneers make forests and town fights pretty bearable. And these are great units. I mean, you got to realize they do have the smoke and free smoke grenades at yeah which allows you to get rather close to the enemy and, well, you know, give them some burny, flamin' worth of love. Then you got some MG42s, but really, machine gun, dedicated machine gun teams in the vast majority of Panzer decks is completely useless. Because why have a dedicated machine gun, or spend a slot for a dedicated machine gun, when all your half-tracks already have a slightly a worse, but still, a dedicated machine gun, yeah, it's bulletproof. And even though they have less range and damage, being bulletproof is a much better trade-off. And mobile, uh, yeah. You also got Pioneer Fear, there's nothing really too crazy here. You can get one in the fancy half-track early on, but really, I just recommend getting the regular. The major difference with Night Panther is that throughout each, each of the phases, all your units get an extra star of veteran sheet. So on B phase, everything has one star, and then once you get to C phase, everything has two star. So it's very much a balance between having enough infantry early on to get you through the first 20 minutes so you can be rewarded in the late game by having two-star Pioneer and Pan-Grenadier Scrodge absolutely wreck face. The Pioneer Scrodge which you get don't come in half drag show, so it's a mix between using, you know, Pioneers for CQC, Pan-Grenadiers later on and you don't really have the half tracks for, you know, extra half track spam. So the tanks. So the main thing are the Panzer II Luxes early on. And these are lovely little light tanks. And they are the very definition of a light tank. They're pretty fast at 45 kilometers an hour. So they can maneuver around the battlefield very well. And that is pretty decent overall. The autocannon is good to deal with soft targets. But, you know, Shermans and Stuarts will be a rather pain in the ass. Especially against Shermans, you're going to want to try and 
get in close and flank him if you are using Panzer twos. But you get an awful lot of M and A phase. I mean, five per card is a really good deal, and three for one star veteran sheet is also pretty good as well. And these are solid little light tanks. You just have to know how to maneuver around the battlefield with them and not using them in open ground engagements. You also got the regular Panzer twos, which it is pretty much using as a command unit. They're not as mobile or as good as the Panzer II Lukes, as they do have less ammunition. But still, you want them in your deck because it's extra command stars. Now, in B phase, the main thing is the Panzer IV J. And the whole gimmick behind this deck is you get 125 points a tick. And these Panzer IV Js are 125 points, meaning that you can get a Panzer IV every minute, which is a pretty good deal. Now, the Panzer IV J's major weakness and right is cheaper in the Panzer IV H, even though if you look at the stats card, it's pretty much exactly the same, except for one less side armor, is the Panzer IV J's turret rotation is much slower. See right now how the turret is rotating on the J? It's pretty slow. Look at the H. It's pretty fast. Now, that seems like a minor detail, and it's like, why is that like a 15-point difference? But honestly, that makes a huge difference having a slower turret rotation. Because you see, once B phase hits, when you're getting Panzer Force, honestly, you're not really going to be using them in far open ground, long range engagements. Because by B phase, they already got Wolverine, 17 pounders, 76 mils, usually in spades. So having this in an open field is usually a suicide maneuver. And so you want to keep it more in close quarters, hedgerow engagements. And in more close quarters, hedgerow engagements, there could be three different approaches yet the enemy could come through three different hedgerows and when you have to make a snapshot shot onto an enemy tank turret rotation makes a huge deal so the panda 4j's are still a pretty good buy because you, you can buy one per minute which is you know pretty easy you just have to rate every 60 seconds to figure out if you want a panda 4 or not but if you are using this and more cqc close range fighting and it's like bullshit i should have got first shot it's because of the turret rotation. So, if you can, I'd try and micro it a little bit to face the ray that you want. But even then, if it spots an infantry and it starts shooting that, and then a Sherman pops around to the right of it, yeah, you're usually going to lose the Panther 4J. But you get a lot of them here. Veteran C is still pretty good. You also can get some Stooks, but Stooks are... I mean, they have two-star Veteran C, which is nice, but it's a little bit too pricey, to be honest, considering it's pretty much the same as the Panther 4J. And heck, the Panzer 4 j with its turret rotation speed is pretty much a stug, as it's so bloody slow. C phase, you get more Panzer 4 js so you're really not going to be running out of Panzer 4s in this deck. It's, it's really just Panzer 4s galore. And you've got some more Panzer 4 hs and then two Tigers, which are your only dedicated heavy tanks in this division. No Panthers, no King Tigers, just regular old Tigers. And... A little bit outclassed in C phase, 17 pounders, 76 mils are easily going to go through them. But the two star veteran she does help out quite a bit. And because their name is not Michael Rittman, they usually have a you know 10% extra chance of living. Support tab, pretty standard. You got some 75 mils on a bag of half tracks. You got some A phase uh, opal blitches and A phase flam panzers, which are great for firefights inside the towns. Quite literally, firefights. These mixed in with Stern Pioneers in town fights are absolutely deadly and with a bit of micro you can just completely destroy everything in a town by running this down the road and burning everything left and right of you. One of the few new units that's been added in the division is this ugly motherfucker and um, yeah. It's just a command car. It's it's really just a command park car. But you get three of them, and they have two star veteran trees, so it's a very good command car in terms of uh, slots. And you only have four slots, so I definitely recommend taking this for the extra command. Some more opal blitzes and B phase, and then grills and more opal blitzes. So nothing really too crazy here, which is pretty much the motto of this division. Uh, anti tank, panther tracks early on. Don't really need it, considering you already got, you know. Panzer Faust Galore, and you're not lacking an AT, because you can also get more to freeze an A phase with one star veteran sheet. And I'd say both of these are pretty much necessary, because your Panzer twos can't deal with proper tanks such as Shermans. So you have to rely on these two more to freeze to deal with Shermans. 
are pretty good at that because there's a 1.2 kilometer range. So fighting the only only real major issue are French Wolverines, fourth armored Hellcatch, and then the Yag Padra and Eight Phase for Demi Brigade. But even then, the Mortar Free can relatively engage all of them and still win because it does have the Veteran Sheet, which helps out a lot. And then regular Pack 38. B phase, pack 40s, more pack 38s, more water freeze, and then C phase, pack 40s, and finally some Yanked Pounders, which are pretty necessary because you only have two Tiger tanks, so these Yanked Pounders are the heaviest piece of kit that you got armor wise, and they can still put up a fight at long range. Anti air is really boring. It's a flag 20 mils, flag 3 mils on half tracks. Flag Verkalins, 36s, full Flag Verkalins, and Flag 88s and Mobaragons. It's, it's really quite standard. Mobaragons are great. Uh, Flag 88s are also pretty good with a two star veteran sheet, but you know, you only get one per card and you're going to be rather limited in cargo activation, so I don't really ever find these fitting in my deck. So I think the 36s and the Mobaragons are really the way you want to be going in terms of anti air. Artillery is good, but it suffers a major gap. Early on, you got a lot of water half tracks, a lot of them, and you got a two star run. Even though you only get one two star run compared to two regular runs, this two star half track might as well be a machine gun because it just issued so bloody fast. It's absolutely crazy how fast this thing can. I highly recommend you always take this two star half track, and you got some more regular runs. Once you get B phase, all you have is a BEO pounder, no refs. No Panzer Earthers, no Naval Earthers, nothing. It's just it's one off map artillery piece, which is a little bit underwhelming. You know, it's still a fully functional Panzer IV, so you have that going for you. And then C phase, it's a little bit overkill with the Hummels. And the Hummels are good, but they're, they're a little bit pricey, I'd have to say. So I never really find too much use for them. The two star run's pretty nice because it has better stats, accuracy, fire rate, etc., compared to the unvetted runs. So it's actually not a bad buy. I, I usually don't think you're gonna... Unless you're playing like a dedicated team game. Where you can like RT spam a bit. I don't really find the Hummels to be that great. And also some more. Another Panda 4 off map. And airplanes. It's... I, I keep... I hate saying it. But it's pretty standard. Fokker off an A-phase for fighters. Uh, two rocket Messerschmitts. Which is actually pretty good. So your A-phase fighter loadout is nice. You're not gimped. In terms of airplanes early on, you can actually bring in, you know, some bite. And these rocket Messerschmitts are very good because they have a two-minute reload. It doesn't say it here. It's a bloody hidden stat. But these rockets do a lot of damage and you can bring one out for two minutes. So you just destroy everything eventually. AT guns, AA guns, etc. You got some more fighters. You got some... Bomber planes, such so as G3s and G1s, so you can have a bunch of small bombs or one really big boy, and then one two star fighter to get you through. And damn, that was really fast. There's really not much to go over in terms of like pandas. Everything is extremely straightforward and streamlined. There's no real crazy gimmick unit here. And here's a deck out I built earlier. Uh, as usual, deck code is in the description below, so let's just go right through it. So, recon. Uh, one card of Panzer on C's, just for the vehicle recon, uh, A phase spar troops, and then both B phase two star spar troops, as they're pretty bloody good. They don't mess with two star spar troops. They are essentially a half ass Panzer Grenadier squad in an open field engagement with recon optics, and they also have a two star half track, which is great. Infantry, so we got four cards of pre C phase and then three cards of C phase. So once you get to C phase, you're going to be sitting rather lovely. But anyway, we've got the Stern Pioneers at A phase and then one Panzer Grenadier card and then one fewer card. It's a nice mix. I see some people take both cards of Stern Pioneers and it does work rather well. You just have to be good at using that smoke to close the distance with the enemy. But um, it's, a, it's a nice balanced mix which works in all maps. Whereas sometimes, like for example, if you're playing on Carpet you don't, ex or Carpet Cat Duelist, you don't exactly need Stern Pioneers and A phase most of the time. Panda Grenadiers be much better. Uh, one card of Pioneers to get you through B phase, and then after that, it's the two stars. So you have to be a little bit conservative early on with infantry, 
but it does pay off and it's it's enough to get you by just as long as you're not throwing them into the meat grinder tanks uh one card of command panzer twos and one card of panzer two luxes for your early panzer two pushes a b phase panzer four j c phase panzer four j and both tigers for right you, you really do need both tigers as you need heavy tanks you you really do and these two tigers are your only real heavy tanks and they're pretty good you know because the two star veteran she support uh a phase flam panzer rogue scroll of the sun pioneers like i said before helps making town fights rather breeze the 250 h for early fire support the command car and then B phase over blitzers. Don't have any A phase supply trucks in this, but I find that the mortars have more than enough ammunition to get you through A phase if you're not spamming it too much. And so it's just better to rate your B phase and just get an extra card. As you really do need the A phase fire support to help you through. Because this deck is really all about the A phase. It's very important to have a good A phase. Uh, A phase pack 38, pretty standard. And then two mortar freeze, as you need these guys to help clear the array of any larger obstacles that your Panzer twos are going to face on their invasion through France. Pack 40s and B phase, you know, these Marder 2s work rather well if you want to substitute your Pack 40s for something a bit more mobile. And these have the Veteran Shield over the Pack 40s, which does help out, but the Pack 40s you can hide in the forest, so it's really, it's all about trade-offs. And then you do need to see face your Panzers, you really do to help complement your two Tigers. And yeah, flag 38 in A phase is for the better minimum. One card of 37s, 37 mils, and then one noble dragon. It's the bare minimum, but it's enough to keep the skies clear. Artillery, we take the two star, we take one card of uh, times two, and then just one C phase two star Hummel. Uh, I, I, I just because just the Hummel's so expensive, I never really feel like I'm going to buy two of them as this is too much of an investment. So I just rather just have run with really good stats. And also we don't have a lot of supply trucks in this deck, so I don't want to be completely artillery spamming. But having it's run out just sort of run for picking off AT guns or other high valued threats, soft soft threats at long distance can be useful. But even then it's not really a big play. Heck, even a BEO Panzer IV may be a better trade off if you just want to be a bit more aggressive early on. In airplanes, uh, both A phase Messerschmitt Renault 9s as rockets are pretty broken due to a two minute reload. So you can just abuse these rather well. And then just uh, free fighters in general, one or two South Edgeman G. All pretty sad because it's just a standard Panzer division. So, anyway, let's take a look at the pros of this deck. And it's that you have a very aggressive A phase. A lot of, well, second Panzer has a pretty aggressive A phase now. But you can really make a lot of progress with your Panzer twos and half tracks. You can make a, you can exploit a breakthrough extremely well and just run circles around the enemies with your lightly armored vehicles. And that's what this deck is all about: running circles and literally encircling the enemy to get side shots and auto cannon them to death. You have a very good amount of veteran she. You're not like two star veteran she galore. But it's all pretty spread out. A lot of units have at least one star veteran tree, and you got some, you know, two star specialized guys as the tigers, some artillery pieces, the infantry in C phase to get you through. So it's a nice amount. It's 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 a healthy amount of veteran tree. A pound to four minute is pretty good, even though they are the other J's, which doesn't really help in CQC fights. Just being able to every sixty seconds when you get your income, just feel like. Do I need to buy a Panzer IV now? And just being able to buy it is extremely useful. You don't have to rate around to, you know, get a Panzer IV. And overall, it's just a pretty rare-rounded deck. You know, extremely suffering in any category, per se. There's, there's two categories that are a little bit worse compared to other Panzer divisions. But you got a healthy amount of half-tracks, a healthy amount of tanks, healthy amount of airplanes. It's all rather healthy. You know, average to standard. Now when we get to the cons of this deck, the major one is your lack of heavy tanks. You only have two tigers, and that's it. And not having panthers is a, quite a big deal, as panthers are such a lovely tank, as they have a good amount of armor to, you know, deflect 
heavier guns. I mean, it's only like one or two extra armor compared to the Tiger, but that makes quite a big difference when being shot at from a 17 pounder at long range. That's like, I want to say like 15, 20% in terms of uh, all the penetration chance. So someone may have to uh, quote me on that in the comments. But not having like a lot of heavy tanks can prove to be your downfall as you have in this deck two tigers and a free act panther so that's five tanks later on that can engage in the 1.2 kilometer range so you're going to lose your a phase martyrs eventually by b phase let's be honest here so you fight against like a snowbally division such as third armored or garage armored you're going to have a bad time in straight on tank fights if you're not using your panther 4 j's to engage in closer range engagements so you just have to be very conservative of your heavy tanks and not try to, you know, run your Tiger into the face of a 17-pounder. Also, your Panther runs and twos can be rather hard to use, especially for more newer players, because running up against a bunch of Stuarts or Shermans can be a pain in the ass in an open field. You've got to use them in more CQC, hedgerowy environments. You can't rest them over an open field like it's May 1940 in France, you gotta try and sneak around through the Arden Forest and get behind and on the flanks of guys. They're also rather fast, so even though you may not have any recon or infantry screen in front, you sometimes do just have to take out risk and hope that you can book it down the road so you can get around the enemy. Sometimes, you know, you get blown up by a hidden AT gun, sometimes you manage to get through. Just have the Panzer run C in front for the recon. Also, you don't really have no Panzer Earth and Abra Earthers or Refs, which are pretty standard for a lot of other Axis tank divisions in the artillery tab. Even though water half tracks are rather nice, and I think is more than enough to get you through a match, Panzer Earthers are so good as they just completely shut down an entire push. And just not having them, especially if you play more like Rintound or Trophicess really does feel like a bit of a bummer. But apart from that, that's pretty much all when it comes to the actual deck building. So let's see how these guys actually perform in a match. And we are back. So we have ourselves a Bumblebee Potato, playing as a length Panzer Division, and Jibirus, uh, Jib, Jib, whatever, Jib as the Demi Brigade. We are on Hill 112. And rather, let's take a look at Bumblebee's deck real fast. So, less recon, heavy Panzer II spam, stern pioneers up the bottom A phase, some flak ATH, all fighter planes, but still, you got the Tigers, you got the Mortar Freeze, no Yag Panzers, so overall, this is a much more aggressive A phase, B phase deck, but when C phase hits them against a more heavily armored tank division, this would suffer a bit, just due to the fact he only has the two Tiger tanks, no Yag Panzers to support, yada yada. So hopefully Bumblebee can run in the first 10 minutes. And you probably noticed that his replay only has another 15 minutes left to go. So, well, let's see what happens. So we're just going to speed things up real fast. On a map like this, it can be hard to do a Panzer run, Panzer 2 push. As it is rather open in terms of open field. But you've got relays, you've got the hills. And with the hills, you can use that to obscure your movement. And have good dead zones and kill zones. To, you know, use your auto cannons in close range to blow up enemy tanks. Against Demi Brigade, it can be rather difficult on this map as Demi has a uh, Panzer Freeze, a Panzer IV, Jagd Panzer, Pack 38, and Pack 40s, which can all stop your Panzer 1, Panzer 2 push. So, if we just take a look at his deployment, he is going to be going straight for the top of the hill, which makes a lot of sense. It's the best CQC area for him, and then just going down the hill would be pretty easy. And then left-hand side, just small defensive units, nothing really too crazy. That's using a Stern Pioneer in an open field defense, whereas you put it in the forest, but still rather interesting choice. Now his right-hand attack group has a 250-8, one Panzer II, uh, recon Spa Troop, two Star Mortar Half Track, and one Panzer Grenadier, so a rather spread out force. Here we see what he's going to be up against. If really it's the Panhard that's going to be the major threat. You've got Jedbergs here, two heavy AT grenades, and these rallies do have a Faust Patron, 
and of course these partisans as well. But that's really it when it comes to anti tank. And left hand side, we do have this from Panzer three, but we've got the pack thirty eight sent in position. We got spa troops and half track, so nothing really too crazy. It's it's pretty decent defense. As you can just use the half tracks old the open field as that bloody half tracks are pretty good at that because they're bulletproof. So we are seeing him move onto the hill now. And it does have the mortar half track on standby. And this is going to be very important in dislodging enemy positions. Just using it to uh, blast away. And as you can see, it has a pretty fast reload time for an 80mm mortar. He's just doing some blind firing right now. Just, you know, making sure there's no partisans. Literally partisans inside of these forests. And he's going to be trying to get some shots or smoke on the panhard. Because... The Panhard at longer range will be able to kill the Panzer II. Does have the range advantage and enough penetration to go through it. You know, it has to get within like 900, 800 meters for the Panhard to actually get a penetration shot. But nonetheless, you still want to use this smoke to allow your Panzer II to get in closer. And Jibus sees this. He's going to be pulling it back. And he got the 1 250 slash 8 for fire support dealing with infantry. And he's moving his half track and spar troops in front, trying to screen the ray a little bit. And really, it all hinges down to his pads are too dying or not. Fortunately, the rallies and the Jedbergs are way too far away to actually do anything to stop this. But you see, Jib is already spawned and began a pants free in another pan hard, which may not pan out too well. So it's going to require Bumble to get some more armor reinforcements. And he's getting the Mortar 3, which is definitely the best call that he can make. Because the Mortar 3 can easily kill all of these tanks and has the range to do so. Especially on the top of the hill. It can just shoot down all the way down here from here. It's completely sussing off these roads from any movement. So we've got 250 slash 8. Going to be taking some shots at the Saboteurs. And there's some good fire support, Panzer Grenadiers getting in. And the Panhard is going to be getting into position. Going to be shooting a 2 5 run. And he's just keeping the Panzer 2 back. Doesn't have line of sight on that Panhard yet. And he's just using smoke so he can move his Panzer 2 fr freely. But he doesn't want that to be engaged at long range by the Pan. And because that smoke's here, he can now, and also the tree line. He can reposition to deal with the infantry first before having to deal with the tanks, clearing his forest out and using the 250 slash 8 and the mortar to just well, clear the forest. And just good use of fire support. In the middle, he's managed to move his 250 run, just get some good ground advantage. Nothing really too crazy, and he's just holding on for left hand side with his light vehicles. And he's going to be bringing up a spar troop and a pack 38 to have a more consolidated position in the left in the middle but left hand side you know, it's not looking too good some saboteurs managed to sneak in here is sending 250 slash run to engage the infantry on the right have been forced to retreat and the panagrade is now making some solid progress and this is really good use of light vehicles he isn't during the traditional just bum rush the panzer twos and try to get to the enemy spawn point in five minutes but he's using them more conservatively i mean he's only fighting against lighter vehicles and in a more close range area such as this hill you can do that as you do have the penetration at closer range to deal with these sorts of tanks and situations and it says getting rid of the infantry first so he can capture his forest before trying to break through you know, at the same time jib is you know he has time he's relays yeah you know uh, bumble was putting most of his press on the right hand side and so he already got you know two pan hearts panzer three a panzer four and a char b1 or b2 depending on what nation we're talking about here all being brought up and these are all pretty nasty tanks to try and deal with and it's really going to come down to have one more to three to really try and deal with these more medium heavier tanks as the Panther 2 can't exactly do that. And there's really good use of smoke. He's just been denying that Panhard from really getting any shots off on his Panzer 2. But look, Mortar 3 position right here. It is dirty. It's beautiful. He has high ground, just like Obi-Wan Kenobi would like. And 
he can just stop anything from coming up the road because it's just two choke points here and here that are really going to come down and just as long as you have that on point you're good to go and look it's pack 38 set up in the middle getting some good shots on the panzer 4 gonna be forcing it to retreat And really, Bumble can win this battle of attrition, because for Jib, once B phase hits, he, he's pretty much SRL, as he doesn't really get many reinforcements until C phase. So it's all about keeping these tanks that he has alive on the field. It was quite surprised me, haven't seen the Yank Panzer be brought out for Jib, as that is such a good A phase unit, especially on this map. As a, a Yank Panzer is going down the middle, or really left hand side, can be an unstoppable force the only thing that can stop him is the mortar free really but instead he is option just using the b1 the panzer force etc we got you know good consolidation in the middle just using his light vehicles not you know doing any crazy big pushes but just harassing the infantry and he's just holding on to left by you know to some light vehicle playing the mortar free which is pretty much going to shut down any advance a little bit too close to my liking I, i'm going to keep it back here but, you know, he, he has the veteran seat. If that Panzer III comes around, he already has first shot. And a lot of penetration to boot. Now, the hill's not looking too great. He doesn't have... I mean, still having to fight these rallies. But once these guys go down, yeah, and he can finally capture it. There's still a partisan squad behind enemy lines. But I guess that's what they're for. And there we go. Fire support getting closer. And now with 258 on field, yeah, rally squad should go down. Oh no, the Panzer Grenadier squad goes down. That's not great. That's not good at all. And he's all deployed like. I think he can get one more Panzer Grenadier squad in A phase. And that's about it, unless I've lost count of another run. But now the hill's pretty much under his control. The saboteurs are still here, but they don't have any AT. And another pack 38, you know. Okay, he's not going to be going into partisan range, which is good for him. For really, Jib, he's been rather defensive with his tanks. I mean, he's probably a bit scared of that Mortar Free. He did lose Panzer Free earlier to it. So, you don't want to be going up that hill, even though that's what he's going to be doing right now. And once he's up here, I mean, I don't think the Mortar Free can actually... No, he can't shoot over the tree lines. But still, in that hill position, he can just do a lot of damage. Saboteur is going to go down here. Water half track even helping out. And even though Bumblebee, you know, he's doing pretty good for not like a crazy aggressive puss. It's a bit more, you know, consolidated and well rounded. But he's very close to getting that plus two point advantage. And that's really good for an A phase, uh, ninth Panzer. And you're going to be in B phase very shortly. But B phase is really going to be the high point for Bumblebee. As, as there's not really much that Jib can get. And he's really going to have to rely on the tanks that he has on the field currently to get him through the rest of B phase. Your know, Bumble does have two more Panzer twos gonna be coming through to try and put some pressure on the right hand side. And the mortar free covering him and the mortar as well. He's he's gonna be doing pretty good. This is an ideal setup here. What it really needs is like a recon infantry here to really be set. Yeah, left hand side he has pretty much locked down i mean still contesting over it but really jib hasn't been able to push through his tree line which is really the all important matter he did lose his martyr free because he did get a little bit too close and you don't want to be getting those martyr frees too close they are they like staying at 1.2 kilometer range on the right hand side his panzer 2 is just going to be rushing up and the martyr free isn't even helping and Look, yeah, they get the penetration and kill the Panzer IV from the front. And that's what I mean, with the Panzer IIs, if you can get in close, they can they can destroy tanks. I mean, it's only an 8-armor Panzer IV. Sherman would be a bit more of a tricky deal. But you can rush up with the Panzer IIs, you know, suppress the enemy tank, and then kill them. That was pretty much ideal. Bit, bit, quite a bit of luck here, too, considering the penetration charges. But still, that's, that's Panzer II play for you. You have to fast move him and just get in the enemy's face. And look, the Mortar free. he's overlooking his position. Anything that comes down that road is going to get shot at if he could spot it. But he can't spot his infantry at the moment. Unless he moves his Panzer IIs up 
to screen the ray. But this is a very good knife pan to play. He's being aggressive, he's putting pressure, he's using light vehicles very efficiently, and this hill is just doing absolute wonders for his more to three pan to two combo. On the left hand side, we're going to be using some stern uh, flam pan to half track, so I think the pan to three is going to really stop any of that tomfoolery, to be honest. And the AA on the left hand side. Pan hard goes down to this Panzer Tupas, and as you can see, Panzer Tupas just make really good breakthrough units, especially when there's not really much to stop him. Finally, we are seeing the Yacht Panzer, and this is really going to be the make it or break it for Jib, as the Yacht Panzer is pretty much good for stopping any of Bumblebee's unit in a one on one fight at long range. But as we see right now, this isn't exactly a long range engagement, and there's a lot of places for his Panzer Tupas to hide out. The same hasn't got a uh, resupply track for his uh, mortar half track yet. Yeah, it's already done a pretty good job shooting a lot of his ammo and a lot of smoke too. Remember kids, smoking is good in, in the Steel Division case at least. Don't smoke, well, if you do smoke in real life, whatever. But in terms of Steel Division, smoking is good. And that was some pretty good smoking from Bumblebee. He's going to be moving his uh, mortar 3 in 258 to getting closer for fire support and pulling back the Panzer IIs. Doing a Panzer II RAS and penetrating to enemy lines is good. What's even better is knowing when to pull back. Because even though these are, you know, rather dispensable units at 55 points, I mean, it's not, it's not like you cry and say if you lose him, it's usually better to try and keep him alive. But really, in the middle, Jip has been pretty much contained to this little pocket here as he's just getting penetrated through the left hand side. With Panzer II's and light vehicles, has just managed to break through. And on the right hand side here, the Panzer II's going to be engaged in the front of the Ike Panzer, and that is not going to be pretty. Not one bit. I mean, there's, there's no chance in hell that he can, you know, penetrate. And even if he wants to move the Mortar Three up here, it's still going to be rather risky. It's the Mortar, f unless he can use the Panzer II's to distract the Ike Panzer, the Ike Panzer is going to get first shot, and that, you know. 400 meters, you can't bloody miss. But he's going to be using his mortar half track to try and suppress the Axe Panzer, which is always which is a good use of mortar half tracks. And what I love so much about mortar half tracks is, you know, they're cheap, they don't do a lot of damage, but they're so good at suppressing units because they're close to the front lines, so you're not like rating a long time for the travel time, and they shoot rather fast, especially two stars rail. So it allows you, even though you're not doing like massive amounts of damage, it allows you to get yeah important suppression bar up a bit, so you can pop around a corner and get the kill. And with Panzer four Js and Mortar threes, which are you know not the fastest shots in the rest, you kind of need to have that suppression bar helping you out. But left hand side, it's completely gone tear sharp for Jib. You only have the one char B1 holding the air. Mortar 3 comes around the corner. Yag Panzer is directed on the Panzer 2. Driver knocked out here, but the gun is still going to be able to get a shot off. But he is rather real damage, as we can tell. Second shot, transmission damage. He's pretty much uh, dead in the water. And there goes the Yag Panzer. And as you can see, Bumblebee's on a plus 3 point advantage. And there's not really much Jib can do to get himself out of this. He has, well, he has no tanks anymore till C phase, and we've got five minutes till C phase, and he's losing by a plus three point advantage, and he's about to be encircled by a Flam and Panzer and a Panzer two in middle. As his infantry, you know, well, Riley's pretty good at uh, long range fights, but everything else is much better in the CQC area, and in this area of the map, these CQC like Jedbergs and whatnot and saboteurs aren't going to be great. So he's been completely encircled by Panzers, and uh, that's how you play Knife Panzer in Rin and 15 minutes. Of course, there's a bit of map advantage, and it helped you. This is much more of a sea phase division, but nonetheless, Bumblebee played it really well, really solid. Used Panzer 2 to suppress, Marta freeze the screen, and more to half tracks to suppress. Easy as pie. Uh, history tab. See, pretty back and forth. Uh, okay, I see. Got, yeah, killing the Panda Freeze and Pan Hard is actually pretty good early on. A little bit back and forth later, but enough. Yeah, it's just 
a lot of blue stuff dies, and knocking out all the tanks was definitely important. And Long Commander 3 did a pretty good amount of heavy lifting there. You act Panzer, the Panzer 3 and Pan Hard, and everything else, you know, pretty good. Panzer 2, but nothing, nothing really too crazy apart from Yeah, Marder 3. And yeah, overall, Ninth is a pretty simple division. It's just about being able to figure out how to use your Panzer runs and twos efficiently as a, a much more dedicated close range light tanks. I um, didn't see any like heavy B or C phase play in this, but B and C phase is pretty self explanatory. Just keep your tigers alive. Try not to let the enemy snowball out of control by having a good A phase and keeping on the pressure. And you do pretty well. And also you got two star Panzer Grenadiers and Pioneers in C phase, which is absolutely lovely. They all just cut up anything that yeah, there comes in your ray. So uh yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about the Ninth Panzer Division. And I'm leaving it off yeah, it's been another Steel Division, the divisional overview. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something. And as usual, please just take it easy.